This is Jessica. And this is Kelly. And this is the Chasing Brighter podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome to January's Book Club. We are going to be discussing How to Be Well by Dr. Frank Lipman. Hey, Kelly, how are you doing today? Jess, I am really excited to talk about this book because I feel like this book is um, such a culmination of everything that you and I have been reading and learning about for however long. So I feel like my journey started back. I was thinking back, I started CrossFitting um, when Wes was like 18 months old, which is so crazy because that feels like so long ago. So that was like 2011, 2012, I started CrossFitting. And that was when paleo got really big. And when paleo got big, I started reading a lot and it really kind of opened me up to this whole different world of thinking about being well beyond just traditional medicine and Weight Watchers, because I feel like those are the two things I was kind of known about until that moment. I'm trying to think like, um, okay, trying to think what you're saying. I think I was dieting before children. And so I had done, um, what is the thing? Slim fast. Yeah. And I had lost a lot of weight in 2003, 2004. Started with uh, slim fast and working out a lot. And then I read um, the South Beach diet books. So that would have been my exposure to um, like whole grains and whole foods and how sugar oh, yeah, impacts yeah, yeah. your body. Oh, yeah. I remember mom and dad I, were doing Atkins for a while, by the way. Yeah. And okay. so um, and then I had a trainer in 2006. And you know what he was talking about? I know he was talking about paleo. and I know he was talking about Rob Wolf. But now I know that but at the time I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. That's where I say I'm a recovering know-it-all because I think people tell me something and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what you're saying. And I know you introduced Palo to me in 2013. I did CrossFit 2015. So I started Paleo 2013. And it's so crazy because at the time there was like nothing grain-free or gluten-free anywhere. Yeah. And now that's a huge, huge, huge deal. Yes. But you're right. It's kind of like this slow journey of educating yourself about nutrition and your body. But I would say what I wasn't doing and what I love what Dr. Lipman is talking about is it's like the Kelly plan and the Jessica plan. I know that Mary talked about that a lot. And I know um, from Warrior Strong Wellness, and I know that Jenny Maloney talked about that. But just it's like there's so much information out there but you have your own unique body. Anyways, I love how he talks about paying attention to how you feel. Yeah. And, you know, he talks about even like weight loss as a byproduct, right? It's not the goal. Like our focus should be just on wellness. Yes. And if for you, for wellness, you have a BMI of obesity, like, oh, well, because the BMI is kind of like BS. It's really about how you feel looking at your health markers, what your blood work is saying. Yes. And everything else takes care of themselves after that. And so I love how he talks about um, the good medicine mandala, right? The yes. six rings of good health. And that's what we want to, that's how the book is broken up. And that's what we want to focus on today. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I think that whatever books that we talk about that we're recommending and everything else, I think as a if you're somebody who wants to start to get get started in like exploring ways to be well and it's like literally you came out of your rock today yeah and you're like where do i start right this is the perfect book right it is a crash course in all the topics all of the things it's it's overwhelming to kind of talk about it even in our podcast i think we're going to kind of hit on some things here and there but like every page, beautiful graphics, great insights. It's not like a book that you like curl up with a cup of coffee and read like a great fictional book. (laughs) It's more of those that you kind of like 
you know, you go through a chapter and like, you might have to take a break because there's a lot of information. Well, yeah. And yeah. every page is like, I need to do that. I need to do that. Like even for well, me, I've read it a couple of times now. Yeah. And I would say it's comprehensive. And yeah. if you like, you could just have this book and use that as a referral source for you, a reference source for you. Yeah. But, um, what he does and what I like is kind of saying, this is important. This is why it's important. This is what you can do. And I love his little tips and strategies. That's why it's so comprehensive. It's kind of like, um, here are some tips on how to um, incorporate vegetables. Here is a tip on how to have supplements. Here is a tip on how to get a massage. You know what? If you don't have people in your life, um, you can join a gym. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. There's just so many tips too. So it's not just like, this is what you're supposed to be doing, but it's also like how you can implement those strategies yes. in like many, in many way. ways you can. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. So let's get started. Yeah. So those six, what would you call it? Rings, rings of health right? mm -hmm. is eat, sleep, move, protect, unwind, and connect. And we'll kind of dive into each of those topics. Starting with most important, which is eat. Yes. Yeah. So um, in eat, it's about really kind of mastering that very building block of life, which we do called food. And, you know, he talks early on in the chapter about um, a quote from Wendell Berry, which I really liked. And it's this guy's a famous author of like, culture and agriculture and how they meld together. But it says people are fed by the food industry, which pays no attention to health and are treated by the health industry that pays no attention to food. And it just seems like, as we all know, I mean, food really is a building block of our life. And it does seem like society in general sort of isn't built right now, foundationally at a way that like supports one another. And so a lot of the book is really talking about really arming the readers with information about how to eat, how to eat well. He talks about, you know, the same things that Jenny talked about last week in our podcast when we interviewed Jenny Maloney, who talked about clean eating, which is, you know, eating food that's closest to its natural source and abstaining from processed foods. So um, the other part is, aside from like the types of food you're eating, I think the other big piece, which is what even when I started doing paleo changed my life, which is really paying attention to um, how you feel right with the food you eat. So there's all this gluten free, dairy free, fat free, whatever it is, all those things um, really being more mindful and thinking about how you feel when you eat those foods and getting right, a good not, mix. Yeah. Not just like doing gluten free because you're like, this is, this is healthy. My my neighbor did it, you know, but um, I was going to build on that. Like what you're talking about is like, it's not safe for you to trust that the food you're buying is safe for you, right? That it's like a money making industry um, that puts labels and tries to sneak, you know, sneak things into you. So if you simplify it and break it down to what Jenny says, and I know Dr. Littman talks about this, but have something as close to the source as possible, right? And look at the yeah. ingredients. And if you can't pronounce it, it's probably not good for you. You know, um, random tangent, I bought, I went to, where did I go? Target and bought some groceries and they didn't have my organic half and half. They just had regular half and half. And they had a couple different brands of it. And so I looked at the labels to say, oh, what are these ingredients, right? And a bunch of them had still some gums and gels. And I just wanted half and half or even, yeah, it was half and half. These have milk and cream and that's it, right? So I bought a non-organic milk and cream from Prairie Farms. Jess, um, I, the first day I used it, I was like, that's kind of weird. It's like clumping in my coffee. And the next day I was like, it's clumping. It's like not even like mixing with my coffee. So I feel like there was something else in there. What the ingredients say? Milk and cream. That was it. It was two ingredients. And there's no way it could have been just milk and cream because it was not mixing right with my coffee. Is and it so true? I don't know if you know that. Like if it's like less than 5% or 10%, they don't have to list it. I don't know. I'm just making it. There was something in there that was like screwing it up. And maybe it was just bad too. Maybe it was yeah. spoiled and I didn't know. 
Um, so I threw it all out yeah. and I was able to mm. get myself what it was. But anyway, sometimes you just don't know, but I mean, I'm, it's yeah. like paying attention to your food, even if the labels are correct, it just didn't feel right. Right. And so I really liked what I thought it was what Jenny said <laughs> last week, which I feel like aligns with Dr. Lemon, but it was just kind of like looking at the food and paying attention to like, how is this going to fuel me? So before you put it in your mouth, are you thinking, right? How, so if you're having a pop tart in the morning, are you thinking what kind of energy is this going to give me for the day? Right. And he talks, so I just wrote in my notes, right. Notice how food makes you feel. And I love how he talks about mindful eating um, and I, and I love, you know, uh, and, and basically the other thing I wanted to say that he talked about was basically like 50 to 70% of your meal. He encourages to be vegetables, 10 to 15% protein, 20 to 30% fat. So that might be a shocker to a lot of people who grew up in the nineties where we thought that everything fat free was amazing. And so it's just kind of like, how can you incorporate more vegetables into your life? Because vegetables have all of these wonderful qualities. How can you reduce sugar, increase healthy fats, yeah. um, and and reduce or avoid packaged food? If you have a packaged food, I don't think all packaged food is evil. And when I worked with the dietitian, she brought to my attention a lot of companies, a lot of different products, because I am on the go. And for me to say I'm going to eat something in homemade every time is not realistic for my lifestyle. So there are products um, that you can have that, you know, are um, sourced in a way that you know, have, have high quality ingredients. Yeah. Um, very true. I think what was interesting about a lot of the descriptions of meals and things that he recommend and even his mix of things really is like not thinking about a carb outside of a vegetable or a fruit. Right. And just focusing a lot on low sugar, mostly vegetables and protein is like his main stick on um, a lot of his descriptions on food, like even just a quick and simple uh, breakfast with, um, you know, full fat grass fed yogurt, blueberries and seeds um, was one. So he got, definitely recommends, um, you know, some easy, easy, simple things to put together. But I think and most of these require some food prep too, to your point, not easy to do. And I would say, and anybody out there who's dairy free, help me out here but i have not found a dairy free yogurt that is good it is super sweet i would i liked um non-fat plain yogurt so all the ones with almond and coconut milk are so sweet they oh, also have a you. lot of junk in them it's and hard so, to find right and so it's like every time people are like have a yogurt i'm like meh you know and so anyways that's great for people who i actually <laughs> am my goal my husband got scared when I said this last night, but <laughs> since I have an instant pot, I'm going to make yogurt. It's supposed to be really easy. Have you ever made it, Jess? You can even do no. But talked that's about yeah, non dairy have, with yeah, soy ways to do that. There's a couple different milks that in the article I read. Um, I should definitely make a reel on this. I need to. Do, I will make a do. reel on this. You can make it. I know that nut pods might not have the ingredients that you like because it does have a gum in it. I believe it's like three or four ingredients, um, but nut pods is the only thing I have found that truly tastes like cr like a cream to me, that it's not sweet. I just don't like sweet things like that. Like if I'm having something sweet, I want it to be like, I am having a piece of chocolate. I don't want to, and so I use it, I make, if I make mashed potatoes, I use it mashed potatoes, my kids don't even notice. I put in all kinds of things, nobody even notices. But I was gonna say like, what he's saying, like no other carbs, like don't have grains. That's great, Dr. Littman, and that's great. And that's wonderful for people. But I also think, again, you have to recognize your body. I know he talks about it, but also like for our children, right? Our children are um, athletes and practice all the time. They can have some rice. They can have some oatmeal. He talks about having oatmeal. They can have potatoes. I think if, well, and, yeah, and that, I think it's just kind of like, to me, I look at it, taking it with a grain of salt. Okay. Have more vegetables. I, right? I feel like what he talks about in some way is really geared to the 40 and over crowd mm -hmm. because when you hit 40, he talks a lot about just, I've even other things I've read about his views on things, which is, 
your body changes hormonally, metabolically, so that some of these things our kids can process metabolically well and don't have issues. But once you get older, there's like more of a cr- the chronic issues that you face that yeah. um, food can be great medicine on. Like sugar is hidden in everything, which I mean, I read about when I read South Beach 20 years ago, but like in ketchup, in sauces, in different things, right? I, I think um, I like I like Jenny's rule from our last podcast, just about like the 85, 15 rule. And so it's like, that's great. If you want to read this book and you can live a hundred percent, I think that's amazing. And you should do that. I don't think that's at a, where I'm at in a point where I can, um, you know, n- have all of my plates literally only be vegetables, protein and and fat but i like the role of like if you are really trying 85 percent of the time and and also i liked what he talked about he talks so much about eliminating gluten and elimination diets which is what i did which is why i know i don't do like a dairy or a gluten but he says if you don't have gluten most of the time you can occasionally incorporate a high quality gluten item and that's what I can do. So I always tell people I'm like 90% gluten free. Well, and occasionally have something. So part of it, he said too, was that um, when we talk about food sensitivities, I thought this was interesting, which is really um, the, the issues people have and they have these food sensitivities might be more of a root cause of an unbalance in their microbiome. And that once you get the microbiome sort of settled in and calmed, which I think is what everyone's constantly battling is trying to have a peaceful microbiome um, that all those other things kind of take care of themselves, which is interesting. And microbiome is not just in your gut. Um, However, he talks a lot about gut health in the Yeah, stems and stalks was a big, yeah, just focusing on the stems and stalks that you eat instead of like the whole broccoli florets, like eating the actual broccoli stem and just really feeding the prebiotic. He also said prebiotics are better than probiotics, which I thought was interesting. So I worked with the functional dietitian, which I know I've said 10,000 times on this podcast, but I did so much of this. So it's it's interesting because I'm like, she has to have had this book because I did like was everything he's talking about. And that's how my plates were supposed to be. Um, but I was allowed to have grains. But anyway, um, I had to do, I had to reset my microbiome and I take prebiotics and probiotics. So I utilize, and he talks about the brand um, Metagenics. Uh huh. And so I believe, so So Metagenics is where I take, um, it's called Mega Pre and it's a prebiotic. So you take that and it has a way you're supposed to take it. It's a powder you put in water and then you take um, Mega Mucosa and then you take their probiotics a certain way. And so I do take um, like a daily Mega Mucosa, which is an IgG, which he talks about in the book. I take that, I drink that every day and then I do take the probiotics, um, but, but you know, fermented foods. I wanted to tell you, you know, I would, so this is what cracks me up. You know, Americans are so crazy, right? So in America, I feel like if a little is good, a lot must be amazing. And so I had read about apple cider vinegar and kombucha a long time ago. This was before you could buy kombucha in the store. And if you want to make your own kombucha, you just do like a black tea with a ton of sugar and you have something called the mother or the scoby, which is like a yeast. Mm-hmm. And you put that in there and it's and it takes out all of the sugar. And so I used to do that. And so when you get a kombucha, you don't need the whole thing of kombucha. It's like one to two tablespoons of kombucha is a fermented beverage. But for a while from doing paleo, I was doing sauerkraut a lot. I was doing kombucha, um, you know, just some of those which are 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 not ferment aren't fermented foods prebiotics yes right so i was doing a lot of that stuff so i think like or probiotic i remember when i worked with the dietitian and i, I swear i had filled out like 15 or 16 pages and i was going with her to lose weight <laughs> and then she was like uh you have um what's that called leaky gut and it was like what you know you just don't realize how crappy you feel like how your base how your baseline is so crappy 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, you can have an opportunity to really look at like, how am I feeling? How often am I having a bowel movement? Do I feel bloated? Do I feel gassy? Like, how do I really feel? And you can heal yourself with food. And that is why I think that's the cornerstone of his six rings. You can't out exercise a bad diet. So if we, if you want to look at what's a number one thing I can do to impact my health, it's to clean up your eating. And I think that's the bottom line there. Yeah. I mean, I think the majority of the book is focused on eating. I I think even if you look at, it's like a third of the book is on eating. Um, And it's a ton of different things, by the way. He calls out salt and about eating salt, and he um, references uh, just the fact that salt isn't bad for you, and there's there's good ways to eat salt. One of the things that I did read um, the book from Dr. James uh, De Nicolantonio, which is a, called The Salt Fix, and he references him in here about salt and i only use like our salt in our home aside from like i have table salt that i use for cooking but the redmond redmond salt is like the salt i i only i order it off amazon um have you heard of this salt how about himalayan sea salt that's what we use is that okay yes but there is this salt that's like really high mineral it's called redmond real salt and it's mined in utah I like some mm. ancient seabed. So that's the salt I use. And Mine's the, a newer seabed. It's yeah. It's so ancient. And it's <laughs> good to be in America, I guess. Um, but it has, the salt has a bunch of naturally occurring minerals with it too. So it's like not just clear white salt. It's like got red and brown in it too. And he referenced books I know you and I have read. He referenced Wheat Belly. Didn't you read Wheat Belly? And Grain Brain. Grain Brain we read changed both. my life. Yeah. Yeah. We read both. So he he references. So if you want to go to deep dive, and this is in the blog post, but um, he references or his recommend his recommended books are Wheat Belly by Dr. William Davis, Grain Brain by Dr. David Perlmutter and Kristen Loberg, um, and also Real Food Heals by um, Seamus Mullen. And uh, that is a cookbook. Um, And then salt, sugar, fat, which I know Rachel Messenger, the health messenger, was telling us about salt, sugar, fat. Yeah, so those are good ones. We should put that on our list. And and I want to say out there to anybody, and we're going to have to have a podcast about this, but like, what do you do? when your kid is terribly picky, like, you know, my youngest, I I thought about that, like his behavior has been out of control this week. I know he doesn't feel good and he eats terrible. He eats terribly. He eats terribly. And it's just like my other two aren't like that. Right. My other two have, they eat a rainbow. Um, and it's like, I know it's his food, but it's so hard because he just doesn't eat. So we present the food, we have the food, I send it in his lunch, he just doesn't eat it. And so um, that's something that I would love to explore some more is what do you do? And even Jenny Maloney talked about that, like her daughter eats chicken, right? Like chicken strips, chicken nuggets. And it's like, how do you, um, you know, get a kid to transition over because I can see see how I think it's impacting his mood, his behavior, his immune system. Um, so I would love to, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have someone on to talk about that. Beckett's birthday weekend was two weeks ago and I bought, um, donuts. We had dessert that whole weekend. Both of my kids were shitheads and, um, (laughs) I know it's because it was a massive amount of sugar that they were eating. They had pizza for dinner, um, didn't focus on a lot of vegetables, mac and cheese for lunch, just all the crap that whole weekend. Um, I think there's a huge difference. It makes a difference in their quality of sleep. Um, yeah. I Sometimes we have wins and sometimes we have losses in that, Jess. It is a constant battle, but I think what you may not remember as well dominic was always a good eater gabby was picky picky. she was picky but they had tried i would say um by this i would say by six there's a maturing they had a turn so he's eight but he i I would say he's eight mm -hmm. but he's a covid five (laughs) i think i think between i think it's nine or ten for my kids it was under ten i mean wes 
actually Beckett now it, it, certain things where I'm like, eat this, it's good. And he'll just be like, oh, and he'll fall over and die. I was like, right, that's really good. Um, I'm slowly trying to like introduce them to things. I think you can do gateways like, so truffle is a delicious flavor and anything with truffle they will eat now. But I started with truffle fries. So like a fry, they like truffle. I'm not sure, maybe I'll test that. Oh wait, it tastes like God's gift to the world. Yes. So it almost like maybe, Anyway, I, I think, yeah, we can make it a separate. It's I'm, hard. But I, but you know, hard. also, I, I want to say that, but also want to say, if you are questioning, I eat like this and I feel great, and you are a parent, look at your kids and you can be like, oh, wow, I can really connect food, mood, health, et cetera. For sure. and, I, and I also, I think we do, like, if that makes sense, I don't make 10 different meals. Gio just doesn't eat dinner. You know what I mean? Like, we make him taste it. He's thrown up. He's actually when he we made him taste a bite of broccoli and he um, he has like a gag reflex and he just like he just like spit it out and threw it up. You know, you're like, oh, I'm going to try this. Hey, we put a little cheese on it. Hey, I read put cheese on the broccoli and they'll eat it. You know what I mean? It's like all the things. And so I feel like I just have given up and I'm like, oh, maybe one day he'll, uh, you know, have a variety of palate. But it is frustrating when you have to live in the behavioral madness well and they talk about i think that's why it's important of even feeding feeding kids vitamins at some level right because vitamins help when you they're not getting those that's why they're called supplements right it's supplements which you can't get in daily but you know i want to transition to that second ring unless you have something to talk about ring number two all right so the second ring is sleep and dr Littman does a great job of talking about why sleep is so important and how detrimental it is to your well-being if you don't sleep but if you also want to deep dive into sleep because you are someone that struggles with good sleep you can listen to episodes 19 and 20 of the podcast where we do a two-part series on the book why we sleep so i feel like we've exhausted sleep because we've talked about it so much um but you know it, you know sleep allows our body to repair itself poor quality of sleep is linked to mental health issues like anxiety and depression it can cause physical problems memory impairment emotional instability um the number one lifestyle contributor to the risk of alzheimer's um and it can make you he says make you fatter biologically older and more at risk for heart disease so he talks about getting sleep and about getting eight hours of sleep he also talks about naps and you know especially on times where you may not be able to get that good quality sleep it's okay to nap and he talked about napping is good early afternoon 20 to 25 minutes which is really kind of my nap um during my research with this book and one of the new things that people are talking about and he mentioned in a a um another podcast i had listened to was taking a nappuccino jesse have you heard yes. of this nappuccino tell me about a nappuccino okay, okay so right. the nappuccino here's the deal you drink a cup of coffee very quickly and then you take a 20 minute power nap and then you wake up and if you you don't want to nap for more than 30 minutes but after you take the you do the cappuccino or some coffee you take your power nap and apparently you are going to feel like a million bucks okay so okay. we need to try this and see so how you works. shoot i would shoot an espresso immediately lay down wake up 20 minutes <laughs> Because I, yeah, you have to immediately lay down because you want to, you squeeze the nap in before the caffeine takes effect. Right. Right. How about that? I, it is, it's like, I'm not a napper. I think it's because I could be a napper. I am an, a morning lark, right? So you're a night owl or a morning lark and I am a morning lark. I get up at six, I run and move like a crazy person. And by 3 p.m. I'm dead. But by 3 p.m. it's when I get my kids. So there's no opportunity to take a nap. Then I'm running all around being a chauffeur. Chauffeur. Um, you Do you nap? Yes. And when do you nap? Um, I mean, I don't normally nap. Um, 
on d- during the weekends if i'm at a moment where i'm relaxed and i find a sense of like you know what i feel like i need to like take a nap right now because i start to feel tired and i'm laying say i'm like laying down somewhere watching tv or something i feel tired i will then turn everything off and have complete quiet and take a little nap right um, right my husband brian is a huge napper he is a one to two hour napper when he gets home or on the on the weekends i'm saying i'm I'm gonna go with on the weekends and it's usually when we're tired so if we were out late or if like we've had to get up early like becca's got these 7 a.m soccer games situation going on so that's not a normal time for us to get up uh that there will be a nap that happens yeah. he doesn't drink caffeine maybe he could do like a quick cup of coke or something but there's yeah. sugar in that yeah if anyway. if you are the only other thing i want to say and i know we've talked about it before but um this is something i do in my practice a lot but it's kind of it's called sleep hygiene so if you are struggling to sleep the the, the things that i would recommend immediately and, and that dr Littman recommends is uh turn off devices at least an hour before bed and have an, an a routine um so that your it your body has cues that you're going to bed so you're kind of doing the same wind down routine every night so if you want to go to bed lights out at 10 at 9 you would start low lights, engaging in calming activities, again, no screens, and really do that a lot. And it takes four to eight weeks to shift your body's clock. So it's going to be something that you've got to really focus on. Any other tips that Dr. Lippman talked about, Kelly, that you want to talk about? Dr. Lippman also talked about um, just how stress impacts sleep. And how really addressing stress can do a sleep. And I know we talk about a lot of that in our podcast as well, um, just to kind of remove stressors or even meditation or other things that help kind of like eat up your stress in some way so that yeah. when it does come to sleep, you sleep better. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole lifestyle. It's like you've got to look at all of these lifestyle things, caffeine, alcohol, stress level um, to ensure that you're getting good sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it, the next, the next, um, ring on how to move links to that, which is, you know, if you're moving and doing something during the day, you will sleep better as well. Right. So it's about kind of like calming your mind or taking your mind off things. And movement is a great way to do that. Um, movement is huge. Yeah. And, um, you know, doing, he talks about, you know, doing things that you love related to movement. Mm hmm. Um, he also talks about um, just the fact that sadly, in a lot of society today, you know, a lot of us have a sedentary lifestyle. We're sitting here doing this podcast and how, you know, that sedentary lifestyle is associated with higher risk of cancer and depression, lower cognitive ability, uh, pre-diabetic blood sugar levels, um, diminished sex life and sleep deprivation. And so, you know, just the idea of getting out and moving every single day is a really critical part of, um, you know, how everyone's lifestyle should be. Right. But it's not just, it's not exercise. It's not working out. It's like, it's, it's not healthy. If you are sitting at your desk eight hours a day, and then you go work out for two hours. Correct. He wants you to get up every 45 minutes, look at ways like take the go up the stairs to the second floor then take the elevator to where you're going then the next week go take two levels park far away in the parking lot um squat he says put your plates down like what you talk about he talks about a lot of tips put your plates in the lower cabinet so you're squatting it's like how can you like if you look at human evolution and what we've been doing like we're not running we're not moving it reminds me of when i was reading so much about paleo isn't mark sasan Mark Sisson, who yeah. talks about primal, the primal lifestyle. So he talks about like eat like a caveman, move like a caveman. He he says lift heavy things and run really fast sometimes. And so I feel like that is aligned with what Dr. Lippman says, where it's talking about lifting heavy things, right? Moving your body, but like fast sometimes, right? Like hit workouts, high intensity training. Once in like, a while, yes. Just like sprinting a little bit, doing some jump ropes, you know, whatever that is. Um 
But I like what I also love what he talks about, about being mindful of the space that you are working out in. I don't know if you like remember this part of the book, but he's like, go to a gym where the trainers and the staff make eye contact with you, where they encourage individuality and where they touch you, you know, and we will get into that when we get to another piece, but how important physical touch is. And so are you working out in a place um, that is conducive to what we need as humans, right? Eye contact, letting you kind of do it your way and that there's physical touch. So I liked the way that he talked about um, a gym space. Yeah. I think that is awesome um he gives a ton of tips and you know one of the things in the book in general i think to summarize some of the tips in every chapter which i think really hits home in the move one is it's he says it's the ordinary things we do on a daily basis that have an extraordinary effect on our health and i think movement is a great example of that so to what you were saying it's not about going to the gym every day it's about getting up and moving around he talks about micro sessions how just taking 10 minutes twice a day to do something i did a five minute walk on my treadmill this morning. I'm hoping to get some more in, but it's something and it's about just right. moving throughout the day, um, especially because it's cold in Chicago and I don't go out nearly as much. So I've got to figure out different ways to get get some exercise in that is more natural. I mean, that's mm-hmm. even in my own research on, you know, if you do, everyone's back at the gym right now, but one of the things a lot of the or i i read was it's one thing for you to go in the gym but you want to make sure you're not substituting that for your daily movement so you should still continue to like think about the average steps you get in a day and continue to focus on that if if you work out it doesn't mean you should walk less um it's about i think dr Lippman talks about that right it's just about like moving your body yeah as much as you can and i um it makes me want to go back so tuesday wednesday i exclusively do telehealth it makes me want to get blow up my exercise ball again and set on an exercise ball. Remember that was a big oh, yeah, thing that's like a great 25 idea. years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, that's a way like that you're kind of moving. Um, and, and yeah, just kind of getting up all the time. I have a Fitbit, you have an Apple watch, but we have a smart watch that buzzes. Mine buzzes every hour to kind of get up, to get X number of steps every hour that can kind of remind you and help you. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of like, I like, it's not exercise. It's not working out. I think it's, it's time to stand moving up your right body. Now, Okay, you stand up. Do you want me to stand up? No. Am I supposed to stand up? You can up? do what you want. Do you want me to walk in place? Also, I have a treadmill that has a desk that fits on it. If I had a treadmill desk, I would have no teeth and possibly a broken nose. I don't know how people do that. I don't know either. You I would walk and go through sickness. a meeting. I'd be like, oh, I've got one, one more point to add. <laughs> Could you just walk slow all day? I don't know how people do that. But that's a thing. That's it is a thing. A thing. Yeah. So and it's fine. Want to do that, and you're really coordinated. Um, get a treadmill desk, right? Yes. But then that, I mean, anything else you want to say on movement? I'll stand up too to be cool like you. Um. So he talks about you know tech injuries and just the fact that we're all addicted to our phones and ways to combat that. Um, mobility, and he gives some tips on different ways to like be mobile. Um, do you remember he said for especially lifting? And a lot of people say this anyway, but the single best move you can do. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. Which is my favorite movement. That's my favorite. I I had Gabby do it with a kettlebell yesterday. I said, now moving forward, I want you to do um, deadlift and push-ups. I broke it down for her because we had a big workout for her. And then because he told us that the deadlift works every single muscle group. The other thing he talked about, which is something i do swear by as well is using a foam roller and working your fascia so like he talked about injuries and things that um you need to make sure you recover from injuries if you don't recover from a physical injury of sorts it will do more damage to in the long run and one way to do that and to keep your body kind of healthy in that way is to work on your fascia and so he is a huge fan of foam can you talk about your fascia for our listeners who may not know what you're talking about um you mean like what is fascia 
Yeah. I don't, I don't know what fascia, it's like your deep tissue. It's like some of the connected uh-huh. tissue in your body. What is fascia? I don't know. Are you know Googling it right now? <laughs> no, I'm not Googling it. Oh. You should Google it. Okay. okay. I've got it on here. The fascia enables the forces of the muscles to be transmitted safely and effectively without harming the other tissues. It helps muscles to change shape and length. Superficial fascia lies beneath your skin. Deep fascia is slightly tougher and more compact. So you are right. Um, The connective tissue under our skin is the fascia. It is a thin gelatinous membrane that surrounds and is fused with the bones, muscles, tendons, nerves, blood vessels, and organs in your body. Mm. So basically it is not an area of your body. It's just like rolling around on the foam roller. It's not your muscle. It's like connected with your muscle. So roll around on a foam roller. Yes, I have two foam rollers and I love them. Also, we have deep tissue massagers. Don't you? We do. All right. Massage gun is like the most amazing gift to the world for sure. I know. Where'd you get yours from? Oh yeah. From your sister. That's right. Okay. Um, You know, my sister bought it for me and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And we're all addicted to it. Um, our entire family, if anybody has any sort of tightness, then everybody gets some, everybody gets passed around to everybody. Um, what I'm hearing you say, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the gift that keeps on giving. It is the gift that keeps on giving. And if you're thinking about, we should have put that on the holiday gift list. And if you want to get one, you don't have to get it even for one person. You could just get it for a whole family, like a family nice. gift, because it yeah. really does benefit everybody. I got Benefits one on, in like, multiple ways. One, you don't yeah. have to hear somebody whining about their back injury because right. you can just give them the massage. And gift. what's funny is that Giovanni um, loves to give massages because he wants to hold the gun. So it's great because he just like gives me a massage. He thinks yeah. that's so fun. You're right. Um, and kind of looking at the fourth ring is protect. So what I want to say about protect, which we kind of talked about, is basically... He says, not everything that is available to us is safe. So we need to ask questions about what we're putting on our body, in our body, and around our home. And so he talks about, so protecting is... There, you're, We all have toxins and we need to figure out ways to address them. The other thing he talks about is just eliminating toxins from our body. And one of the mm-hmm. things that he talks about is coming up more and more which is alcohol consumption and how alcohol is a toxin and he he's not anti-alcohol he talks about you know and we'll get into the one of the other rings about connect because really um consuming alcohol is sometimes an occasion where you're connecting with other people you're sitting around a table you're you're with family and friends and you're having a glass of wine and like that's okay but just really being more conscious of the fact that alcohol is a toxin and limit how very much limit how much you are consuming and he also talks in here about having a supplement strategy i know we've talked before because you and i take 10,000 supplements right um so what he talks about is and this is what i'm trying to get people to understand is that <clears throat> Not all supplements are the same. Not all multivitamins are the same. And so it's important to buy supplements that use the best ingredients and are free of preservatives, fillers, binders, anti-caking agents, shellax, coloring agents, gluten, yeast, lactose, and other allergens. So there are a lot of top tier brands that a lot of times you have to get kind of through a provider, through a health practitioner. I gave a few examples in the blog post, um, Be Well, Designs for Health, Metagenics, and Zymogen are all examples of uh, brands and companies that have a really high quality ingredients. Um Yeah. And like you said, I mean, you really can't access those very high supplement companies without going through a practitioner. Um, You know, there is a lot of controversy right now coming up with regard to supplements and there are studies coming out that are saying, you know, supplements don't work, blah, blah, blah. Um, And I take all of that with a grain of salt, unintended. 
Red which salt. is the Redmond salt from Utah. Okay. Yeah. Salt. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is those studies, you know, it's one thing to buy like nature's nature's way from CVS. It's another thing to buy a high quality sub, uh, supplement. The thing is, is people say, well, this supplement doesn't work or don't take X supplement. The high quality supplement companies, although they are making millions of dollars, um, typically are working on ways to ensure absorption of that supplement in the way that it's meant to be absorbed. And it's a supplement. It's not a substitute. It is meant to supplement a healthy diet, a healthy lifestyle. Um, and Dr. Lipman just highlights a couple key supplements that everyone should be taking. And I think a lot of healthcare practitioners would agree. I mean, A, he is an MD anyway. Um, but we talk about having a good multivitamin and what that looks like, um, making sure it has really the right levels of um, vitamins in it, a high quality fish oil. Um, again, we talk about high quality because it's about getting absorption. You could be taking Flintstones vitamins all day long, but <laughs> if they're not absorbing, it's not even worth it. I used to eat those right. like candy, Jess. I don't remember. I loved them. I mean, I remember them, but um, probiotics. I, I, I used to take grandpa's Tums, side note. <laughs> um, the other one that we know we should be taking as we, especially as you get older, is glutathione and CoQ10. And so there's different ways that you should be taking those. And again, I think it's one of those where we definitely encourage um, people to get with an integrative or functional medicine practitioner who is well versed in these and know what's the right combination for them. And also, so my dietitian works with Metagenics. And so that's where I get my multivitamin from. And it's really just getting a code from them. It's not like it's a prescription, but you just kind of have to have a code to get them. I know we use Zymogen before. What happened for me with Zymogen was with COVID, nothing was available anymore. So all my subscriptions kind of ended. Um, what I've been using a lot now is, is designs for health. Um, I've been told by several healthcare practitioners to be careful where you get um, your supplements from, like if you get them from Amazon, they're not storing them in temperature controlled areas. Um, but designs for, if you order on Am, if you order designs for health from Amazon, it ships directly from designs for health and you do not need any kind of code. You can directly order designs for health. Um, and, you know, I think we're no long, we are, you know, not medical experts here. So we're just telling you what we do. But I think, again, we, we recommend that you get some, expert advice yeah, before talk kind to of the provider in your life and yeah. um you need to talk to your healthcare provider and but once you do that and they do recommend things there's different ways you can get them to your point and even for probiotic which everyone should be taking i think even just your general run-of-the-mill internal medicine doctor would tell you fish oil multivitamin and um what did i just say oh probiotic Probi oh, and, and i like how the probiotic he says at least 20 billion CFUs. Yeah, he gives so some guidance on that. Plus, I know you want to switch up your probiotic every year or so because you want to get access to different bacteria for your microbiome. Yeah. So that was a really, I think that's a really great chapter. It talks a lot about just different ways to protect your body. Um, and it's what's in, what it, how important it is um, to be, be aware of and ways what about, to detox your yeah, body. Yeah. And what about really quick earthing? Can we that was talk cool. About earthing for a second. So remember, like, listeners, when we had Rachel Messenger on and she talked about grounding, and we talked about grounding and how grounding is a way to kind of bring you to the present. Well, there's a like big thing called earthing where you know you go and touch the earth, the ground with bare feet. And he talks about, you know, um, the natural negative electrical charge of the earth. And by having your bare feet into the ground, it replenishes your, your supply. It replenishes your supply of free antioxidant electrons, which help to stabilize your body's bioelectrical systems, promote anti-inflammatory activity by neutralizing positively charged free radicals and regulate your biorhythms. So that's the other thing too, is it's like, I can talk about like, oh, this is why grounding is good, but he gives so much like medical and scientific evidence as to why that would be helpful. So I thought that was really fascinating. 
Super fascinating. Um, and there's now a documentary on the science of grounding. So not only should you take your shoes and remember, ooh, remember, sorry, my favorite movie is Pretty Woman. Mm -hmm. And I realize now that I'm older, how that's like really inappropriate of a movie okay. about a prostitute who like <laughs> ends up staying with a guy. When we but were 11 even, and 13, but whatever. <laughs> I was 14 and I still like loved the parts of it where you could go shopping. But right, remember, they just take their shoes off and they walk through the park. Yeah, he was earthing. He was earthing. He Richard was earthing Gere is an earther, that, man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And he, he, he wasn't he like a famous vegan and all the things. So he probably knew what he was doing. He yeah. did. And speaking of earthing and grounding, it really is a great segue into the fifth ring, which is about unwinding. And, yeah. you know, I think unwinding is, it's about clearing your mind. And, you know, we do a lot of work ourselves with regard to meditation mm -hmm. um, as a means of unwinding. Um, but it's about just like finding, doing activities that clear your mind. And it doesn't even have to be meditation. It could be washing dishes, painting your nails, just it's, it's things that you do that you so find mindfully. Yes. And that calm your mind. And I love, so I am like, all about minimizing for 2023. I loved how he talked about clearing your space, you know, the space you live in, the space you work in as a way to clear your mind. So there is something to be said, and there are a lot of physical and mental health benefits of not having crap all over the place, not having papers all over your desk, papers all over your kitchen table, stuff everywhere. Having less has health benefits and well and i feel that i cleaned out a bunch of boxes from my office this weekend and like i just feel like my she shed slash office is much more calming and conducive because it doesn't have as much clutter in it um the thing i loved about this book is there's so many ideas he provides so many ways to get the most out of your life it's not a one size fits all book. Every single chapter is just overflowing with ways to, to make it fit with you and your lifestyle. Yeah. And mm -hmm. even in this unwind, how he says to, um, you know, using sound as a way mm -hmm. to unwind and listening to music and attending a sound bath. Yeah. That sounds very interesting to me. Um, yeah, I was going to go to a, um, with my friend, we were going to do like, a the drumming thing kind or of a like sound, it was like a sound meditation thing. Um, I bought, um, anybody out there that's like, what sound therapy? I did a lot of research on it and I bought a, um, Tibetan singing bowl. And there is a, if you want to look up a group called 33 bowls. So if you want to try and immerse yourself in your own sound bath. Um, check out the Tibetan singing bowls. Um, I thought that was cool. Oh, did you show me this before? I feel like somebody showed me some of these things before. 33 bowls? Mm, something, I don't know. I have to. Um, there's so many cool things about, I'm intrigued by this sound bath, but um, I think there's a lot of different ways of thinking about that. Like and even just nature sounds, right? Mm -hmm. Just Yeah, I... I did. I went to like a conference and there was a woman that was a sound therapist and she brought up so much research um, as the type of music that you listen to and how it can build or your body can lose muscle mass while you're listening to it. Just mm. the power of sound. I also love in this chapter when he talks about practicing saying no and setting boundaries um, mm -hmm. that sex is a way to unwind. So one of the things I, I think I love so much about this book is it really aligns with what I do in my practice, you know, as a mental health practitioner of, you know, it's a multi-pronged integrative approach to better health and happiness. You know, there's all of these things that you can be implementing to have balance, um, and to improve your health. Yeah. And one of the, he's, he has a quote in here that I really liked. And I think unwinding is part of that, which is habit. So mm -hmm. I think getting into meditation to me is building 
a habit, but it, he talks about, you know, once a habit is developed, um, it works effortlessly for you because partly your brain loves habits. Um, and when lifestyle choices become habitual, they are automatic. And mm -hmm. was it, um, the health messenger also talked about the book atomic habits, which we also need to read, which I think talks a lot about how we, how it's best to form habits. And yeah. one of the things I was going to add too is, you know, it talks about laughter as a way to unwind. And, you know, I think as a parent, music and laughter are two like super uber, uber like neutralizing mm -hmm. um, things mm -hmm. to even build, build a relationship with and share, right, with yeah. um, family members. And also, um, I, he talks about no tech days. And something that I really thought about was that he talked about how we're all in separate rooms, on screens. How can you incorporate a day where there's no devices or no screens? Now we want to move to the sixth and final ring, which is connect, which I love so much. I know that we're going to be transitioning February. We're going to be talking a lot about connection here on the yeah. podcast. Yes. You know, but connection is about awakening and enhancing a sense of belonging and meaning. And he gives, you know, 11 great tips for connection. Um, do you want to talk about those tips, Kelly, or what do you want to focus on with connection? Yeah, I think let's start there and we can kind of talk deeper on and comment on different parts of connect, but it's really about um, awakening and enhancing your sense of belonging and meaning. And I think, you know, there's a lot of research about this in general, but, you know, the general feeling of being alone is not healthy for anybody. And it's that power of connection um, that can really continue to optimize our health. And it and talks is, about, yeah, go ahead. Getting a pet. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. And I wanted to say before we get into the pet situation, okay. um, was just like with COVID uh, more people are working at home and losing that that daily connection. And I have seen more and more people in my practice who you know, want to make new friends, you know, we want to have a new village, we we want to meet people. Um, and so just to kind of recognize it's really important, and that we need to ensure that we do have connection. So if you are alone, you are feeling lonely, hard to find friends, bam, get a pet. Uh, we have three very, um, we have three animals that are that are known for being friendly. We have two Burmese cats and our dog is a border doodle. He is a standard poodle border collie mix. When I open my door every day, all three animals are right there. You know, it's like they just want to be there. They all could be like snuggled and touched and hugged the whole time. So you get that physical touch from them. Um, Kelly, do you guys have any pets? Not yet, Jess. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I've thought about this. Listeners, what do you think if uh, someone just bought you a pet and didn't talk to you about it? Because I've thought about getting the boys a pet before. I think you'd kill me and never talk to me again. But you know what? Um, I don't recommend it. But because I have heard <laughs> horror stories. That's um, so intrusive. And that's poor boundaries. So don't do that. <laughs> I have been, we're closer to getting a pet because I'm also talking about somebody's like, oh, we got a puppy. And I was like, why did you do that? Like, why would you get a puppy versus a full size dog? And like, what is it about, you know, like just having a, a puppy? Like I've been trying to do all this research about mm -hmm. and people are like, you know, it really sucks, but it's worth it. It's kind of like having a kid, but I'm like, I don't know if I want to like go through that sucky part before it's worth it. So we're getting closer. Mm -hmm. um, we, I have, I continue to kick the can down the road, but I am now at a after spring break. Do you have a spreadsheet? No, we probably should. Oh, okay. No, I, I was, it was a mock question. Mm. What about just like going with your gut, Kelly? Just, well, I'm waiting for the universe to tell us. And actually we went to a party this what if weekend. I'm the universe? And we met another couple who has a Pomsky. And that's one of the dogs that we're looking at. And uh -huh. so they told me that they got it from a breeder and blah, 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 blah. So I was like, huh, maybe that's the universe telling us that maybe a Pomsky is yeah. the one. 
And like I said, um, we have friends that you can look if you if you want a purebred, you can look at rescues and say, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. And then they'll let you know, which I didn't know would have been available to us. But now that I know, I'm like, that's really cool. Yeah. Too, right. Like a more, <laughs> I don't even know way to get an animal, but oh, a Pomsky would be super cute. Um, I'll have to look up that breed. I'm assuming they're fuzzy. Yeah, they do shed, but they have a better disposition. I think the balance is like shedding versus non, um, hyper versus calm. I think those are core. There's a correlation between the two. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. I love it. Does you ever think that when you come visit us and just how Beckett plays with the animals the whole time and always surprises me how much your husband plays with our dog I just I'm just waiting for your family to have a little pet or you don't notice that when you visit oh no I mean when we went to Kansas City and stayed with Aunt Jean Becca cried on the way home to the airport and I was like why are you crying with him and he was like because of the cats because Aunt Jean (laughs) has like five cats they don't even they come in now the house they they're like they don't even want anything to do with people yeah and he does love rascal yeah he loves he rascal. loves rascal. He loves rascal and jenny maloney actually is getting a cat she was mm-hmm. telling us she's getting a cat your cat a cat. burmese cat yes mm. so um wes and your husband are both highly allergic to cats correct or allergic to cats yes. ryan's fine because he doesn't rub his hands all over his face after touching but, I mean, here's the thing. Have you heard of stories of, so people say, well, I can get a cat. I'm allergic. Have you heard of stories of anybody who was like, I got a cat. I'm highly allergic to them. I almost died and I had to give it up for adoption. No, you've never heard that. Right. So like, is it a matter of just Brian? Kind of immerse? No, no, no. Like oh. he had cats growing up and he oh, was allergic right. to them and he got shots. Right. But like, I don't know. Like, does it, do you get over it? And cause that's the thing where I'm like, those Burmese things. So like Wes is highly allergic, but like your cat's don't they still I, to have me, highly allergic is i have had a person come in my house no i haven't maybe with our other cat but like to me highly allergic because you walk in my house you start seizing and that's happened i've had that's happened but is house. it the cat not or is it the pet dander in general not with the burmese but i have a friend who's allergic to cats and the, it only like if her cat's got in her room and laid on her pillow she would have like swollen ice and sneeze but other than that if she just washed her hands after you guys had a cat when you were in San Diego. What kind? What yes. was the name of that cat? Do you remember that? Did you Oliver? Have? He was a tabby cat. Oliver, yes. Years. Oliver was Justin's just a very first pet ever. Giant pain in the butt. A rescue. Yeah, he was really horrible. He 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 was a biter. <laughs> but for me and our family, if we commit to something, we commit to something. I think a lot of people give pets away all the time. I don't know how they do that, but. Um, if we commit to a cat that is really mean and bites, we're just going to have that cat for we'll the stick rest with of it. the cat's lifespan because we committed, you know, like um, you say, we're achievers. But anyway. Okay. So I know that our chat is actually going long. And so we'll go yes. through these. Um, Get a pet. Get out in nature. I love have, what he says about having meals with others. Yeah. It's restaurant week right now in Chicago and it's winter. It's a perfect time to meet people and connect and find ways. Cause you're not out and about as much yeah. have, um, potlucks go out places, um, uh, engage in touch with others and touch is so important that if you cannot have touch from another creature, um, he gives a lot of tips on self massage. Yeah, he does be kind and pay it forward um thinking about ways to help others again it's just things on a daily basis you see somebody who needs an extra set of hands and you just do it open the door for others there's little things like that um practicing daily rituals Mm -hmm. um as a way to connect i think an idea or something like that that i think about is with my in-laws and my husband we have a group and even you and mom we have our group wordle yeah text, right so it's like a daily connection with other people mm-hmm. um where you're doing something and you're sharing that even though we don't see each other and you know he does talk i think it was him or no it was somebody else i read just about social media and how in some ways social media is great because it does it's a means of you know for you to Human connect connection. to other people yeah and also a ritual can be you sitting and having coffee by yourself every day you know just having a ritual um journaling or just writing about your mm-hmm. thoughts and feelings 
feelings. Um, he starts his day every day with 20 minute meditation and practicing gratitude. So he talks a lot about that practicing gratitude. We did that this morning in the car. I asked the kids, you know, what is something you're grateful for? Volunteering. I always recommend volunteering. That is such a great way to connect. Yes. And also you're making the world a better place. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, the next, the, the final one is um, making friends and actively participating in current relationships, which is going to be um, one of our upcoming episodes in February when we're going to talk about connection and really deep dive into making friends um, and maintaining friendships. Yeah, which is very important. Absolutely. So the, this was a lot. So you're probably going to want to re-listen to this podcast. You're going to want to check out the book, How to Be Well. But thank you so much for listening on January's Book Club. Thanks for listening and joining us today. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Chasing Brighter or on our blog, ChasingBrighter.com.